the day I laid my son Odin life to rest. I felt my heart start beating for a moment. Ursula Ward, the mother of Odin Lloyd, speaking at the sentencing, a sentencing of former New England Patriot tight end Aaron Hernandez after Hernandez was convicted of first degree murder. Welcome back to hour two of America's Forum. Uh, as Miranda Khan mentioned in her update, yesterday Hernandez convicted and sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Odin Lloyd, and Hernandez still has another trial awaiting him for a double homicide. He has been long removed from the NFL, but for quite some time now, crime, violence, and player conduct have sparked debate about the culture within the league. Joining us now for more on this story, TV and news commentator Steve McPartland, also checking in from Newsmax Washington, my former congressional colleague, Michael Patrick Flanagan of Illinois. Steve, it is good to have you here on America's Forum. It's good to be here. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. What, in your view, is happening? Is there one set of rules for one group in society and a separate set of rules for players in the National oh, Football League? Absolutely. There always has been. The issue is it's not so much for professional players as it starts when they're children. You cannot play on the professional level. You can't be a professional football player, baseball player, basketball player without having showed that ability at a very early age. And at that very early age, at 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, they are being treated very special by their coaches, by their peers, and by their parents. And that is one of the issues that breeds the societal issue we have with players being above the law, feeling that they're invincible, they can do anything. They've certainly always throughout their entire life been treated special, different. You are better than everyone else. Why wouldn't they as they become young adults? And let's not forget, these people are very young adults. You know, Hernandez is 23 years old when he, was, when he committed this crime. That's very young. So it's, it's not Do you a quantum leap to go from, it's okay to take an extra piece of pie. It's okay to steal the candy from the candy store to shooting somebody. It really is not, it's, it is a progression that happens with there. people. Let's hear, I think uh, my colleague Mike uh, Flanagan has a question from Washington. Yeah, I, I apologize, I, I have a little audio trouble here. Uh, the, the cult of celebrity that attaches itself to these players that with the bazillion dollar endorsements, with the, the treated like a TV and movie stars, and that celebrity treatment that they now expect, um, you know, they all think of themselves as, as loose cannons and Kardashians that can behave any way they want to and then be rewarded for it. Uh, do you think that it's not just that they're treated special from when they're young, but the fact that we lavish attention and money on them and continue to treat them apart from everyone else as they move into their, uh, into their adulthood and into their fame? Well, I could agree more, but let's not forget, Mike, that they are celebrities. They are basically mm -hmm. entertainers. And if you've been, I mean, I was a sportscaster for many, many years. When you walk into a room with celebrities, everybody else with uh, sports celebrities, everybody else becomes invisible. I mean, I've, I've been in Mickey Mantle's presence. We walked into a, a small tavern with only 12 people in the whole place. 12 people walked up and asked for his autograph that day. So, in fact, they are celebrities. And I don't know how a human being can condition himself or herself not to think that they are above the norms of society when they're treated so special by people. Uh, you know, Steve, it's been interesting. Over the last few years, the NFL has basically started an orientation for rookies, talking about finances, talking about conduct. They've had some players who've gotten in trouble come back and say, hey, I was wrong. But is it just too little, too late? About a minute to respond in this segment. Well, I don't think it's too little. I don't think it's ever too little. Because I think there's, if the league wants to perpetuate itself, and that's another question, another subject for another day, is whether or not the NFL can, is viable to perpetuate itself. But the truth of the matter is, you have to do that. And it's long, long in coming. And the NBA should be doing it. And Major League Baseball should be doing it as well. You are giving these very, very young, inexperienced people tons of money. J.D., if I had $20 million when I was 22 years old, I would not be sitting here today. Yeah, in a, in a lot of different ways, we can all think about the insouciance of youth 
and the notion of money. Use insouciance, the carefree boldness of youth. Yes, uh, build word power here. I, I got the word from my old pal Michael Patrick Flanagan, that fancy ex-Chicago lawyer, Sousiance. who's insouciant in his own right. Look that one up. But but aside from that fact, seriously, there is a situation where the innocence leaves very quickly. The entitlement starts. And that combination, along with the insouciance of youth, can be a real problem. In, uh, whether we are being insouciant with you, we're, we're going to come back and talk more about the serious problems confronting sports stars and society. Whether the NFL will continue our conversation right after this. Welcome back as we continue the conversation with news commentator Steve McPartland here on the Anchor Desk and from Newsmax Washington, our good friend, former Congressman Michael Patrick Flanagan of Illinois. So, Steve, athletes behaving badly. It's, it's, it's not a new story. No. Uh, but it does seem that in the recent past, there have been a whole lot of problems in the National Football League. Is football a sport more prone to attract more violent guys or guys who are get in trouble more easily? Well, you know, I think that the uh, obvious answer would be sure because it's a violent sport. It is the most violent sport. Anybody who watches the game knows how hard those hits are. But I did something very unusual for me last night. I did some research. <laughs> there were 1,500 players in the National Football League in 2014. There were 51 arrests. Of the 51 arrests of players uh, who played in the National Football League in 2014, only 15 were of the violent variety. That's 1% of the league. So one would think that considering the public trust they have and the adoration they have, that there should be a zero tolerance. None of them should commit any violent crime, and they should all just be so thankful for the money and the opportunity they have to play in the National Football League. I am on that line. I believe that. But 1%? If you took 1% of, of television hosts, you'd find some crime. If you took 1% of Catholic priests or, or, or police officers or, or firefighters, you would find crime. So I don't think it's as rampant as people think it is. It's just got a lot of attention, largely because, one, there was a murder, and that'll get you attention every time. And Ray Rice punched his wife on camera. And that's what created a lot of the attention for the National Football League that's been nothing but negative. I think that you, you have a point about 1%, but you also have to observe that celebrities, whether it's sports stars or others, used to treat their celebrity as a responsibility, not as a gift from the masses so that giving them license to behave extra, extra badly and fall only into 1%, therefore it's somehow acceptable. It's not acceptable. Well, it's and not they acceptable. Have, they have on a public trust that they have to make. They have to get along with the public. They have to be not, not grateful, but they have to have a responsibility about the wealth, about the celebrity, and about the time that they have, not to mention the fact that the fans are the ones that keep them in the money and in the celebrity. Well, I, I think we, I agree with you, we have to have no level of, of acceptance of this, but to dismiss it as only a few is, is unacceptable. Well, if well, we had a better view of their need to be responsible, I think we'd have to, we'd drive those numbers down, but the overall bad behavior would also go away. Well, Congressman, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. We're both on the same page as far as what we should expect from their conduct. What I will disagree with you on, it's not new. It's been going on forever among celebrities in football, baseball, basketball, as well as Hollywood. I think we just know a lot more about it. There is a much shorter news cycle now, and we know a lot more about their misconduct. But believe me, if, if we had a couple hours to talk about this, I could tell you stories that would spin your head about the conduct of professional sure. athletes. And we also know that the culture has changed as America has changed. You, you sure. can think back about getting the, uh, the baseball annuals for the major league teams used to list home addresses <laughs> of the players and their oh, player yeah. profile in the early 60s. Yeah. That, was, that was par for the course. But there was a notion of more accessibility Sure. And uh, we, we, it's misquote to say money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. But has, has the, the big money just added to that feeling of immunity from, uh, oh, from social well, responsibility? Absolutely it has. And, and you, you talk about a responsibility factor, as the congressman mentioned earlier. The truth of the matter is, is ball players in every sport had to have a second job in the offseason. They had to face their responsibilities by going and selling linoleum or being a stockbroker or owning a bowling alley like uh, Mickey Mantle and Yogi Berra did. You, have to, you had to do that to, to fulfill your familial commitment 
to actually support your family. That's not the case anymore. Now you get out of high school, you get out of college, and you have enough money to last you the rest of your life if you use your brains. So certainly money is one of the, uh, the key factors and the motivating factors in this misbehavior, in my opinion. You're, you're so right. One of the things that Aaron Hernandez said when he was arrested, he didn't, he didn't talk about losing his football career, and he said, there go my endorsements. It was the big dough. That, that got his attention, not a dead guy, not even his football career, but the big money that came with it. And it is problematic because we've got young people, like you've observed, who have no capacity to handle this. And hopefully they have good adults in their, in their world that can help them, but so often they don't. And we have big problems that come with that. Well, we sure do. I couldn't agree with you more there. Uh, and, uh, and another thing, just I, I know we only have a minute to talk about it, but another issue in, in my mind is the thug culture. You have all of these young men who have so much money and they are exposed to the music of the thug culture, to the violent video games of the thug culture. And I think that is an issue that if, if I were running a football team, there would be no video games in the locker room. It wouldn't be there. But then, of course, Steve, the players union would step in and try to stop that. There are so many different discussions we could have about this. Steve McPartland, we thank you for your time. Sadly, it's more likely than not we'll be discussing right. this in the future, but we're always happy to have you here. Michael Patrick Flanagan, stay with us from Newsmax New York. When we come back, another disturbing development worldwide, that of honor killings. We'll talk about that next on America's Forum.